Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Aloha, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. My name is Shadna Holt Leva. This is my 2007 Silverado and then my wife's SRT Charger. Here where we are is the little piece of paradise I call the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. And uh, this thing has completely transformed over the last few months. If you guys have not seen the Garage Build series, definitely go check that out. So from the floors to the ceiling, to the walls, to the baseboards, to the cabinets, to the TV. This thing has completely transformed from this when we moved in to this little piece of paradise now. Super excited about this garage. But today's video is not about the garage. It's actually about a car that's not currently in the garage, which is over there. So this thing here is a 2000 Mercedes C230K. What the K stands for is compressor, even though compressor is spelled with a C, not a K. But basically what this is, is a four cylinder supercharged Mercedes rear wheel drive. It's actually kind of a fun car. And this car wasn't too bad of a family car for a while, but it got super unreliable and kind of unsafe. So uh, I got my wife out of this thing and put her in that new SRT charger over there. Uh, that was that was her choice, guys. She's actually she actually chose that herself. So she's kind of a badass. But when it comes to me and my relationship with this car, I hate it. It hates me because every time I try to fix it, mend it, do anything with it to make it better, something completely unrelated goes wrong. So here's an example. A few years ago, the air conditioning went out. I replaced the AC compressor, the evaporator, everything. And I kid you not, literally the day the AC was fixed, the turn signal lens completely just falls out of the car. Like the adhesive glue just went bad and the lens just fell off. We ordered these new clear lenses a while back, put them in, we're driving, and then literally the brake light goes out. And you start to think some of these things are kind of coincidences, but guys, it's not. A few weeks ago, I just changed the oil, changed the oil, and then the next morning when I was driving to work, oil's changed, driving down the road, hit a bump, and the dome light just falls out of the ceiling, hits me in the head. Like oil, dome light, no, no relation at all. I fix something, I mend something, I make it better, I change the oil, I clean it up, something else comes, just goes wrong. So I'm interested what's gonna happen after today's video where we make this car drive like new. doing this in the first place let me show you what's going wrong with the suspension because we're having serious we're having serious suspension issues are you kidding <laughs> When I mentioned that this car hates me, that every time I try to fix it, something else unrelated goes wrong. We're stuck in park. So actually there's a pin here because this isn't the first time this has happened. You stick a pin here and then you can, there we go. All right, we're out of park. <laughs> Seriously, this car. Okay, so problem number one is the wheel within the wheel well. When you hit the brakes or the gas, it moves about an inch within the wheel well. That's issue number one. I believe my lower control arm bushings are completely shot. I went up in there yesterday and it looks like my tie rod ends are pretty bad too. So, lower control arm bushings, tie rod ends. But here's my, my last and final thing we'll be working on today. So I don't know if the microphone is gonna pick that up, but just listen to the tire noise. Or my passenger front tire it has been completely destroyed over the last few weeks. I think it's to do with the suspension because obviously with the control arm shifting backwards, the articulation of the tire is probably a little bit towed in and it's just killing the tire itself. So we need to fix that. But the other issue is my front shocks. The front shocks are 20 years old. When I need a brake, the entire front of the car just dips way down. like all the way down so, so no big deal just another day of mercedes ownership my shocks are completely shot my bushings are completely shot my tie rod ends are destroyed and uh my steering wheel has more play in it than um all in the day in the life of a 300,000 mile car which so the fun project we're gonna be working on today we have a bunch of parts that just arrived from auto house az get it in the garage get it on our new quick jacks and tear the front end apart it's 
we're gonna do actually is clean the car up first because I like working on clean cars. I don't mind working on dirty cars. I just like working on clean cars. So let's go ahead and start the B-rolls, start the time lapses. Got myself some delicious snacks here. Let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off. Ready, set, go. Oh goodness, I love that new mop. Floor's nice and clean, garage is clean, ready to start tearing the Mercedes apart. But what we're gonna be doing is using my new quick jacks. As you can see, I'm clearly less concerned about damaging this car than the last one, so I'm just holding the up button until something pops or breaks. Basically got a car lift in my garage, guys. How sweet is that? We got a nice TV on the wall. Monkey. We got a monkey? Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, step number one, guys. Put the wheels and tires off at the front end. And then we're going to start disassembling all this fun stuff. So these shocks right here are going to be replaced as well as the lower control arm bushing. So this guy and that guy are completely shot. And then lastly, my tie rod ends right here. Yeah, that's completely blown out. All right, this is going to be a fun day. Okay, bringing up the speed. First thing, the lower control arm for the driver's side is out. As you can see, when I mentioned the bushings were shot. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that's not supposed to happen. What I did do, I ordered a kind of a, a ball joint press kit. Hopefully that's gonna be enough to press this out because this is a metal piece that's been pressed in. So we're gonna press that out. We'll get a new one, we're gonna press in. Next thing that came out were the stock shocks. These things aren't horrible, but they're they're pretty bad. One thing I did not order was the lower ball joint. This is not torn, but it's it's completely open as you can see. So that is not supposed to do that. It's way too easy rolling around. So I did have to order one of these. So it's gonna be another day, unfortunately. So that's gonna be replaced along with everything else. So what we're gonna do for today and finish this up is basically disassemble everything. That way when these arrive, we can just put everything back together tomorrow. That's the lower ball joint. This is where this lives, right there. The spring's being held under load. So these will come out and then basically the lower control arm comes out all together. Lastly is the tie rod end. So tie rod end, I mentioned before that they were shot. Is when you're driving and you're steering, the one thing holding the wheels in a straight direction is this piece right here. So if this goes bad, shears, brakes, does anything like this, yeah, this is when you're driving down straight and all of a sudden your right wheel does this and your car does that. All right, let's get this lower control arm pulled out. Guys, you picked up a new tool. We have a ball joint press kit. So I actually press these bushings in and out and I can use this later on when I start doing the truck stuff because, guys, suspension work is in the future for that, FYI. We have a pry bar, the bearing kit, a piece of a fence post, 
a 5 8 cents wrench and the rest of it. So yeah, improvising. But now we have fire. The pivotal moment. Piece of crap. One down, one to go. One more. All right, last and final update for today. Mercedes two, Chad zero. Getting my butt kicked by this thing. So pressing this thing back in here, the new bushing just really gave way and actually cracked right here. So this new bushing is not gonna be any good anymore. And I'm so frustrated and sick of this that I'm gonna order some new control arms. So it turns out the bushings that I ordered were about 40 bucks or I can order two brand new lower control arms with all new bushings in it for about 120. So see you in a few days. All right, I think it's here. Should be here guys. Yes. Oh, oh. Thanks, FedEx. Okay. Well, handle with care, I guess, right? But the most important part, it's actually here. We can continue. Welcome back to the longest repair ever of this car. It's now week three. So it's been another week since the last clip ended. Welcome back again to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. It is time to start bolting this thing back together. So we got both our lower control arms with the bushings already inserted. I know some of you are gonna be asking, why don't you just go and actually just get new bushings and actually press them in the right way with potentially a press. I did think about that and uh, I decided not to. So this is gonna be real fun because actually I think my dad took apart this entire side and he piled up all the bolts here. He has a lot more experience than I do working on cars. He can just kind of throw everything in one pile and put it all back together without an issue. But me, I take a bunch of pictures and organize it and write things down because I always forget. So this is gonna be fun. But before I go any further, guys, the whole idea behind this video is to make a really old car feel like new. I know it's a very far stretch because this thing is really, it's had a few miles on it. And with the whole front suspension, as you saw earlier, was shifting, it was shaking. I could change lanes immediately without doing anything. I just simply let go of the wheel, boom, right lane change. I'm interested in what's gonna happen over the next few hours as I put this thing back together. Let's get to work. Deep down, I know I'm a fighter. Deep down, I know my desires. Everybody thinks that I'm just a liar. They don't know what I got inside ya. I'm the one to fight fire with fire. I'm the type who never lets me get tired. Right. Mess with me and they never will find ya. Yeah, people tell me I won't get it. They don't know me cause I'm cold winning. Always in the night by closing it. Always in my mind, don't know quitting. I'ma be the one that blows up in it. You gon' be the one that shows up missing. I'ma be the one that knows my mission. You gon' be the one with no ambition. I'ma make you take it, take it, take it all back. You ain't never gonna get me, man, I'm too fast. Call me the juice, that 40 yard dash Always look for it, no, never look back I just spit the truth, better listen to my facts Get me up in the booth and I put them on a vest When I spit the truth, they all listen to the facts Got nothing to lose, so I put the Alright, who's ready for round two? And by round two, I mean the other side of the car This one should be a lot faster Because I figured out what I did wrong And what in the incorrect order So I should be able to knock this out really quickly So, if I am to do this If you have a similar vehicle I'm not going to tell you what to do But I'm going to tell you what I'm doing I'm not a certified technician by any means, but I've been working on cars for quite some time. So putting this back together, what I'm going to do is first get my new lower control arm, bolt the lower control arm here in its mounting position. Tighten these down, not super cinched down, but tight enough to hold it in place. Next up, you're gonna put the spring on the lower control arm, put some compression on the lower control arm, get the spring in place, and then comes the ball joint. This is where I messed up last time. Over on this side, I hook the ball joint into the spindle first and try to situate it into the control arm. But the way it's designed, you cannot get that in there with the bolt on top just within the spindle just because it's a Mercedes and they do everything difficult. So control arm, spring, ball joint into the control arm, situate it on the spindle, bolt it into the spindle, hook your shock up, get your tie rod end on there, and then we're all bolted back up. Well, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I hope it actually goes that easily in that way. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. I just spit the truth, better listen to my best. Give me up in the booth and I put them on a vest. When I spit the truth, they all listen to the vest. Got nothing to lose, so I put the pin to bed. That's what I do, hard work always less. And the pain's not an act, though it hurts real bad. But you have to attack what you want to attract, or you're gonna look back and regret what you lack. Uh, 
everybody knows that's a fact. Yeah, I just want my words to impact. Yeah, I just want my words to all last. Yeah, not sorry if I put you on blast. Uh. They know just what they see on the outside. They don't know just what I'm like on the inside. Woo! What's up, dude? What's going on, my bud? You have a new day? Hey, ball. Where's the ball? <laughs> Looks like the little guy's coming to help me, guys. We're saved. Well, it is now 9.30 p.m. And I have yet to take a break. Guys, I've been at this all day long, and I kid you not, this has been one of the greatest lessons on patience I've ever experienced in my entire life. This has been ridiculous, but we are at the home stretch. What took so long was when I set these springs in, the lower control arms are different than the stock ones, meaning where the spring coils down to. So when I put them in, I put them like the stock ones were supposed to, but they weren't correct. So basically I had to pull everything back apart again on this side and put it all back together. Yeah. It is home stretch time. I'm gonna double check everything is bolted up. I need to get that sway bar mounted back in there. Wheels and tires are going back on. This car's gonna get on the ground and it's going immediately back into the driveway because I'm sick of it. I'm so angry at this car right now. Oh, this car is the death of me. Well, she's on the ground. I'm sick as a dog, as you can probably hear. And uh, the car needs of an alignment really badly. The tires are pretty straight. I'm actually kind of proud of myself. This one's turned a little bit to the left. This one's turned pretty much all the way straight. So uh, we're gonna be driving a little cockeyed to the alignment shop. But that's gonna close out for tonight because it's like 11.30, I'm tired. I've been at this since 9 a.m. And this car is effectively done for my part. Needs an alignment and uh, really needs to be pushed off a cliff. But we're not gonna do that because we're gonna keep driving this dang thing just to keep it on the road, 300,000 miles and more to go, guys. I'm so stoked that this is complete. Finish our alignment and hopefully it drives straight this time because the drive down here through the alignment shop, <laughs> it was kind of sketchy. We were crab walking down the road pretty good, but it feels pretty good so far. The steering feels a lot stiffer. So for the most part, guys, wow, there's zero slack in my steering anymore. It's just the slightest touch. Holy crap, it's night and it feels, little, it feels like a go-kart, man. Making this car feel like new again, this is great. 300,000 miles, feels like new. So responsive, it's like a go-kart. I used to make fun of this little car because it was so little. It's such a little compact car, but not too shabby anymore. It's just, it's just a four-seater, five-seater go-kart. But here's our first good turn. Here we go. Oh my goodness, it just sticks. Now the real question, guys, is what's gonna happen next? Because again, every time I've ever fixed anything on this car, something horrible goes wrong with something unrelated. Guess this below, guys. Guess this below. Comment below what you think's gonna go wrong next. Well, here it is, guys. This is the second time I filmed this last clip. I did this last clip about six days ago, but I wanted to get a few days behind the wheel of this car to give you a real sense and uh, feel for my thoughts on the new suspension. It's not a new suspension, actually. It's actually just a refreshed suspension a lot of the components that were worn out and old are made new once again now this car technically was a sports car from the factory it's uh supercharged it's real wheel drive and it has a sports badge so uh, obviously it's a sports car but i'll tell you since i have had it 
there's been zero sense and feel of sportiness in this thing. Right now it has nearly 300,000 miles. It's 20 years old. It was my wife's car that she brought into our lovely marriage. And uh, yeah, we're not getting rid of it because she loves it so much. So. Funny to say that the refreshed new suspension went a very long way. When I embarked into this project, I was hopeful but not optimistic of the changes for this thing. I just wanted the wheel to stop shifting within the wheel well and to be able to drive straight down the road. That was my goal, but actually what happened was that this thing handles so well that I actually find myself wanting to drive this. I'm taking corners unnecessarily fast because I can. The best way I can put it, handling characteristics of this car right now is it handles like a go-kart it's small it's compact it's not super heavy so yes it actually feels like a go-kart which is good and bad the suspension is pretty stiff um, given it is a sports suspension so i'll tell you the 300,000 miles 20 years of interior wear and tear are made very apparent this thing rattles like a rattle can so over the next few weeks i'm gonna be chasing down a lot of rattles on the interiors i have pieces of rubber band yoga mat receipts and a smart food popcorn bag shoved into different nooks and crannies to stop this thing from rattling so that's going to be a fun project at the end of the day i am super happy extremely stoked with how well this turned out and i highly encourage you if you have an old car like this not necessarily mercedes but just old in general if it has miles on it it's highly likely that your front suspension is pretty worn out from the ball joints to the tie rod ends to the bushings to the shocks guys all those were shot on this car because there's a night and day difference right now with how well this handles and in the midst of this project we actually for the first time have a name for one of our vehicles i will tell you that the old mercedes behind me has been given the name of project nightmare yes this thing has been a nightmare since day one of my ownership of it so dub name project nightmare if you guys want to see more of mercedes content let me know in the comments below there's a lot we can do with this thing and it's really 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 old there's not a whole lot of risk in it it's worth about 200 bucks so yeah we'll see where we go with it so let me know in the comments below i hope you guys enjoyed this one i apologize for the lapse in videos over the last few weeks from work to day-to-day -day life it's been very very crazy season but we're getting back into the content now that this thing is back on the road we can get the truck in the garage get it torn apart because interior mods are beginning again thank you guys so much for tuning in today until next time we'll see you in a few days for the next video as always aloha